Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. And if you're looking for financial education, click subscribe, give me a thumbs up if you like this content. This is the ratio update. So what we're looking at is we're looking at assets uh, in compared to assets compared to history, looking at how they're changing against each other. If we're seeing any downtrends, uptrends, any sort of breaks. And I'll give you my opinion on what it means when some of these break their patterns. So we're going to jump in and do a ratio update. This is looking at the market conditions and valuations of companies. And just to start it off with, it's an asset versus an asset compared to history. And what we're looking for in these charts is we're looking for anomalies for investment opportunities. We're looking for sectors. And then we can look at investments within those sectors uh, as we see if they're cheap and how they're changing. I use stockcharts.com to create these charts. Uh, the ones below this, dollar gold, dollar silver, dollar plat, uh, WTIC, which is West Texas Intermediate Crude, dollar plat, dollar copper, dollar TNX, and dollar USD. That's what I'm using in stockcharts.com to view some of these charts. I'm also using macro trends and trading economics. We're also used to create some of these charts if you want to view them yourself. So first we're gonna to go to the gold to copper ratio. And what we have is a break to the downside. Copper is outperforming gold, which means that we are in an economic upturn. We, we were in a downturn. In fact, we we're probably the cheapest copper to, or gold to copper ratio ever back here. And we're heading lower. Could this come back up? It very well could. But we broke the pattern to the downside. And right now it looks good for copper to outperform gold which means we are in an economic upswing or an upswing in the real estate cycle. Dollar weakness is what I think of it. Platinum to gold ratio. What we, what we did here is platinum broke out of its downtrend and then is back testing. This right here is probably a good spot if you like platinum. Platinum price is also looking like it's turning around. So platinum is the cheapest metal on a ratio basis against any other metal. It's cheap against palladium, gold, silver. Platinum is the metal that I like. Now here's the gold to silver ratio. We broke the uptrend <clears throat> to the downside and it's at 68.08. That is a good ratio uh, and hopefully it can compress. It can go downward uh, and hopefully we go all the way down to like a 35 because that would be a, a nice ratio to, to swap over to gold or, or swap to something else if you're in the swapping ratio game. So silver's outperforming gold. Now the gold to oil ratio, oil's been kicking the butt out of, out of gold. We were at a 105 ratio and a total anomaly. The stocks bottomed in this region in here for SM Energy, uh, and all the ones that we like on the channel, this is where I was a big buyer, was this 50 to 1 ratio. This was an anomaly in history. And we've been compressing and compressing, and now we're at 23.62. I think we could hit 20 pretty easily, uh, maybe even this summer. Now, if we break out of this pattern, this channel, I think we could compress below 10. Back here was the ultimate compression, probably below 4 or 5 or so. Uh, hopefully, we can go all the way back down there over time. Huge gains to be made uh, for oil against gold if it were to compress to a, a, a 1 to 5 ratio or 1 to 10 ratio. And that's what usually market tops for oil is a below the ratio of 10. So that's, that's, that wouldn't be an abnormality for that to contract all the way down there. Now here's the gold to silver ratio in the long term. Kind of a messy looking ratio. You draw this trend line up and we are below we broke below the trend line. So this is a very good thing if this can, can continue to outperform over time. Silver is in a very good position in relationship to gold. Now here's uranium. They don't really have updated uranium to gold pricing, but uranium is moving on up. It looks pretty good and it's in an uptrend. So that one looks great. The 10 year treasury bond yield, uh, looking at the right hand side where, the, where I put this blue in here, we have been in a downtrend. We broke to the upside in mid to late 2019, uh, 2010s. We pulled on back. This is the COVID bottom. And we're back above the broken trend line, which means that we're above the trend 
And I've been telling every, you know, everyone on the channel that I think we could see higher interest rates over time, that inflation is coming. And we have broken the downtrend, which we can see right here. Now, if we have increasing interest rates, it would be an environment that looks similar to this in history, all back here. Now, I am going to overlay this red increasing interest rate environment over the Dow Jones. And I'm going to show you what the difference looks like from an increasing interest rate environment to a declining interest rate environment and what the effects are on stocks. So here's the Dow Jones. This right here in the red line was an increasing interest rate environment where stocks went nowhere. This red box is this red box. Interest rates going up, stocks going sideways to down. On an declining interest rate environment, which is 1980 and on, 1980 is right here, it was declining the interest rates which means you have an expansion in the PE ratio, the price to earnings ratio, and Dow Jones flies on higher. Now we are still, we had an increasing interest rate environment where Dow fell down, and then it went sideways to uh, uh, lower interest rates just recently. I'm talking this little, little cliff here. That's this little move going on up. So I think eventually interest rates are going to weigh this down. Now, it doesn't mean that when interest rates go up a little bit that it's just going to crash this. What's going to happen is it's going to start, interest rates are going to start to move up. And at some point, you're probably going to see this wanting to go sideways. Now, here's the Dow to silver ratio. We're looking at relative value again. I'm looking at stocks in comparison to silver because we all know that we're silverbacks, we're apes, we love our silver. And we are, this channel is basically from 100 to 1,000. So one th Dow 1,000 can buy one ounce of silver or Dow 100, can, can, uh, one Dow can buy 100 ounces of silver, one Dow can buy 1,000 ounces of silver. I think I said that right. We are way up here, which means Silver is drastically undervalued in, compar in comparison to the Dow and is basically outside in an anomaly area. I think we've got a shoulder, head, shoulder forming. Give it some time, and I think we're going to go all the way back down. Maybe even doing it all the way back down here. I don't know. Now, here's the reverse head and shoulder, shoulder, head, shoulder. That flew higher. But now we're putting in another pattern here. Big pattern. So. Let's look for a, a move lower, which means silver is going to outperform the Dow going forward at some point. At some point. I don't know that when that point is. Now, here's XAU to gold ratio. This XAU is the gold and silver index, and we're looking at it in comparison to gold. When gold, gold's outperforming the XAU, that means that you're in, in an unfavorable environment for gold and mining companies. We've got a big bottom here. We've got a higher low, and we're about to come up and try to break through this, which means XAU is going to outperform gold. It means the gold mining companies are putting in this massive bottom, which is like basically at zero. And we could potentially move up and have the mining companies outperform gold. I think we could see a massive move in gold mining companies. Massive. Absolutely like a terrifying move. And I'm going to show you on the next chart why I think that. But the XAU to gold ratio is, is bottoming. And now's the time to start looking at these types of companies and start looking on a short-term basis to see when we're, we're going to start bottoming in some of these gold companies. I'm going to be looking to purchase more and I'm going to be buying the royalty companies. This is the ones that I'm going to look into. Now, why would I say that, I'm, that we could see terrifying moves to the upside, terrifying for other people that are not in the sector, absolutely wonderful for, for people who are invested in the sector? This is the gold to monetary base ratio. I've got a declining wedge here. And what a declining wedge means is that over time, if we break this to the upside, and we're right there, we are right there, ready to break to the upside. We break this and start moving higher, 
it means that gold's going to start to account for the monetary base that's been created. And last time this happened was in the 70s, where it went absolutely berserk. And we went all the way to a ratio of four and a half. Right now, I don't know the exact ratio, but it is low as heck. Maybe 0 0.25, 0 0.2, or, or 0 0.3, 0 0.35. So what does that mean? That means that gold, <laughs> if it were to go to this ratio up here, to say 5, and let's just say this is a, a 0.5, gold could do a 10x and still be within historical norms. That means that gold could go to twenty or $25,000 and be within historical norms if it were to go back to the peak of the 1980 peak. Now, I don't, I don't, I'm not calling for that. What I am saying is that we are breaking out of this down, we could break out of this downtrend pattern here very soon. And with the gold minings, the gold miners also setting up against gold, you could see a massive revaluation. If gold goes up 10x, the miners are going to have a multiple of that. It could be three, four, five, six times the 10x. You could do 30, 40 times your money, 50 times your money. I'm not saying that that's what's going to happen. What I'm saying is that it is possible. If this unwinds, if this ratio unwinds from this undervalued state of gold to an overvalued state of gold to monetary base ratio, that we will be partying in Vegas with lots of money. <laughs> um, but this is a very interesting chart. And it, it looks very, very promising, actually, because a declining wedge is a pretty reliable pattern. And I, I think it's coming. And for you guys who are on this channel, good thing you know this is coming. Now, here's 30-year fixed rate mortgage. I know some people like real estate, and I'm going to get into real estate a little bit on some of this stuff. But here is the decline over time. We've been in this channel. I am looking for the break. We've got higher low, higher low. We were going to break right here, and then we pulled on back. I think at some point, you're going to see a 30-year fixed rate mortgage go up in interest rates at some point. And that's normal for when home prices go higher and higher and when you have an inflationary environment. That's what I'm expecting. Now, here's the CRB index. Uh, we've broken out of this declining wedge pattern to the upside. Everything is in check that I can tell, absolutely everything, for increased gold and silver prices, for increased commodity prices, and a decline in the dollar. I have to see this all rotate for me to take a different perspective on it. Now, here's our drivers of inflation. This is our active listing count. These are the years 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021 is way down here, which means our active listing count continues to decline. What is, what is going to happen is this is going to put increased upward pressure on home prices. And I'm going to show you what the natural uh, basically evolution from rising home prices and the state of where we are in real estate, what cycle we're in. That's going to come up here real soon. Uh, here's newly listed homes. Again, we are really low. Uh, it is very low in 2020. It's very low in 2021. We're nowhere near 16, 17, 18, and 19. This is extremely low. Our inventory and newly listed homes are very low. Here's days on the market. Absolute domination of how low this is. This is going to put pressure on prices upward. I don't see a crash. I see further gains ahead of us. This all has to rotate for there to be a crash. You can't have days on the market be the lowest it's ever been. Uh, you can't have low inventory and active listing counts. You can't have that. You have to have this all rotate and turn. For prices to go lower. And here's the median listing price in, in uh, up 12.7%, and it's just walking higher, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, and 2021. 20, just walking it higher. And it will continue to go higher until those metrics uh, turn around. They have to turn around for the real estate price to go down. 
All these people who are saying there's this huge crash coming, you got to see these move first. It's not going to come until you have more inventory. It's not going to come until the days in the market start to really reverse higher. Now, we can have inventory go up and days in the market go up, but it has to be substantial for a decline in real estate to happen. It can't just be a normal, you know, return to, to, a, to a strong market. We're in an ultra strong market and we could go back to a strong market where the, the increases go down a little bit, but I don't see it. I just don't see it yet. And what I do is I look at the data that's in front of me. I don't try to make up any data. I don't try to make up reasons why it can go up or go down. The data is what the data is. It is looking in the review mirror. And what I'm saying is I got to see this change. I got to see the, the, the seller step in here for me to change my mind. Right now, housing market is incredibly strong. It is gonna provide support underneath the market, the entire market, and it's going to be a tailwind for all our commodity investments. So all the charts are saying, we broke to the upside, they all look good, the ratios all look good for a commodity boom. Uh, We've got platinum outperforming gold, copper outperforming gold. Those things happen during commodity boom. We've got real estate prices and and inventory and days on the market. All of our metrics are good. So what do we do? We do nothing. We sit, we wait, we get our companies, we cost average into the ones that we like. And if we get, if we have green lights everywhere, it's, it means it's green. It's green to go. You guys like this content? Give me a thumbs up. Any questions or comments, please leave below. And thank you for listening. This is Finding Value.